Gotta catch them all, Pokemon fans. Welcome to another Place Games video. And today it's absolutely huge news. We've had confirmation of the standard format rotation for the Pokemon trading card game. Which basically, for those that don't know, the standard format is the main tournament format of cards that we use in the vast majority of our online and real tournaments. Um, we don't play much expanded, which is black and white onwards sets in, um, in Europe and especially not online as well so standard format is the main focus for the majority of player base especially especially in the uk and uh, we finally got confirmation of the rotation so every year around september august time a whole bunch of cards then get moved to into the expanded format so then the card pool becomes smaller this year is a slow then they're changing it up slightly um this year they're going to be going by the regulation marks so if you see um sorry it's going to be this side if you see this zashan um you can see in the bottom left hand corner is a little d which means that this zashan will still be legal because from september the 10th onwards pokemon with regulation mark d and regulation mark e which are mostly like shining fates and battle styles ones onwards are the only cards that are going to be legal for play so basically they're future proofing themselves for future formats it's something that japan's japan has had for um for a while now and uh they're trying to bring you know the the global format you know all the cards bring them a bit more global so yes when you're looking at your cards and you're not sure if they're legal for play from september the 10th onwards if they've got the letter d or the letter e in the bottom right hand corner then then you know you're safe but let's um let's just jump straight into it so before we get started in my top 10 cards i'm going to well i think these are the best the 10 strongest cards not they're not my personal top 10 but these are probably the 10 strongest cards that are going to be rotating in September. Um, here are some honourable mentions. So a whole bunch of awesome cards. Um, Volcanion, Pokedol, Surge, Blastephalon, Swell, Communication, Malo and Lana, Coca Prism, Spirit of Mew. These all potentially in their own right could have made the top 10, but it just shows you if these are my honourable mentions and they didn't make the top 10, it just shows you how busted, you know, the tag team format cards were. So especially Volcanion, I used to play a lot of Green's Charizard. It's just, it's still the best single prize fire Pokemon outside of um, just, you know, for setting up and, you know, Blounds was really strong. Pokedol and Lieutenant Surge were cornerstones of a control decks. You know, you could put Chaotic Swell in any deck you wanted. Pokemon Communication, we've got obviously Evolution Incense now, but still very handy in a lot of decks for consistency. Coco, Br Coco Prism, absolute staple of of all electric decks. Mallow and Lana, you know, just our best healing option for ages. And Spiritomb was a very impactful deck, and, you know, it's still been played quite a bit now, actually. And, you know, Mew, once Bench Barrier Mew rotates, um, we've got no ways to protect our bench. Maybe they'll have to reprint something similar to Mew but uh, those are my honourable mentions um, again they're very strong cards and they very or nearly could have made the top 10. Without further ado we're going to jump straight into my proper top 10 now. Number 10 is Reshiram and Charizard from Unbroken Bonds. Um, absolutely busted GX so when um, Pikachu and Zekrom you know when Team Up was out the vast majority of the tag team cards if you ignoring <laughs> Magikarp and Waylord like the, the strong ones you know Mimikyu and Gengar Pikachu and Zekrom they only had around like the 240-250 HP region um, and here comes you know Retro and Charizard with 270 HP and you know we had Welder you can attach up to you know two fire energies from your hand and draw three cards don't worry that'll be appearing later uh, and it was just it was just really strong you could just weld it to 200 damage on your first turn if you're going second with a gx attack you know what attach warmer energy you're doing 230 damage this was like one of the biggest examples of power creep um you know once you know tag teams came in and restaurant and charizard gx was probably you know the strongest pokemon from probably the strongest pokemon like in terms of attacking or you know to build a deck around from unbroken bonds so very very powerful GX and you know that Rainbow Rare also will still be a you know huge chase card from Unbroken Bonds going forward if you're if you're a collector. So if you have been waiting to you know maybe pick up these cards, they might go slightly cheaper post rotation. Um, you know after September the tenth. Number nine, dramatic narrator voice. Number nine is reset stamp. So. I wanted to have a nice balance of trainers and Pokemon in this list, you know, and also these were just the ones that I thought were the strongest. And when I was playing Green's Charizard, having, you know, Reset Stamp, you know, they knock out, they knock out two Volcanians and a Charizard, they're down to one prize. You use Reset Stamp, you don't, they, you, you take them down to one card and it's just so powerful. Reset Stamp has been absolutely huge for decks also like Pikachu and Zekrom. 
um, you know, decks that draw through that you know, they can draw through their deck quicker. They've got easier access to reset stamps. So they've got loads of you know the ones using lots of the Denes and draw supporters. Um, it's the best combat card we've had, and I'm going to miss it greatly because the only way you can disrupt your opponent's hand now is um, from you know from regulation marks D and E from September the tenth onwards will be Marnie from like the main cards. So uh, yeah, it'll be quite it'll be, it'll be quite a sad day when reset stamp goes. I really like I had the gold versions of these in my decks and. A lot of the time, when you would stamp them to one or two cards, you know, they would not have any have any cards to play, and they, you know, you just screw them over. A lot of the time, also, they would just also get the perfect top deck. But that's reset stamp. It's a great card, and probably easily the best trainer card from Unified Minds, anyway. So number eight is Tag Called. So this might be a surprise inclusion um, because it's not seen as much play as it used to do. But Tag Call really made a whole bunch of archetypes a lot more consistent. And, you know, I could have put some tag team supporters potentially in this top 10, like Malo and Lana, Guz Mahala, you know. But having Tag Call gave you access to all of those supporters at any point in your deck. It was like having a Tapu Lele, but it didn't take up a bench space. And then you could also use it to grab, you know, Restaurant Charizard and playing Green's Charizard or, you know, some versions of the Mewtwo and Mew GX decks, you know, use Tag Call. It was just a very awesome, flexible card. And, you know, I will miss these kind of cards because the Rapid Strike Octillery, that's a stage one Pokemon, you know, it's 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 on your, you know, it has to be on your bench and stuff. Tag Call being ax having access to so many different tag team cards was really, really awesome. And I, I will miss Tag Call a lot. It was, it was a really cool card. Number seven, Mewtwo and Mew GX. So there might be one person in particular, Hello Camillo, that probably would rate this a lot higher on the list, but... I never really played it as much. Don't get me wrong, Mewtwo and MewGX is a very, very strong deck. And, you know, but it just shows you if Mewtwo and MewGX is number seven on this list, um, you know, how busted must the other cards on the list be? You know, um, the only reason I don't probably don't make, rate Mewtwo and MewGX a bit higher because it had, it had a lot of counters, power plants, the Mimikyu, the Shadow Box ability that, you know, that turns off um, turns off Pokemon with GX, ability, GX Pokemon with abilities. And, you know, having been Psychic Weakness, you know, it was quite tricky around when Giratina was around, like, towards the start of it and stuff. But, yeah, it was such a strong card. Being able to copy any GX Pokemon from your discard pile or your bench gave you such a huge choice of Pokemon that you can put in your decks. Certain Pokemon would only ever see play in Mewtwo and Mew GX just because you could use their ability. So you could use their attack from the discard pile, especially a bunch of Stage 2 Pokemon. Charizard GX from Hidden Fates, Blastoise GX from, you know, Unbroken Bonds, um, there's, um, the Vile Plume GX, you know, from Cosmic Eclipse, a whole bunch of the Pokemon that were only, you know, seen play, only, well, we used in Mewtwo just because you could copy the, copy the, copy the attacks, and it was very flexible, um, at, like, I think at the latest count you've got Fire, Electric, Grass, Water, just so many different ways to play Mew Mewtwo GX, I'm sure people have made, like, you know, um, look, sorry, there was a grass box with Rylaboom as well. So yeah, Mew and Mewtwo GX is such a busted flexible card, and I would have loved to have put it higher, but it's still a bit, you know, considering how many strong cards there are, I think it's still worthy, you know, very worthy number six, uh, sorry, number seven on my on my list of top ten strongest cards from the uh, tag team era. Number six, there we go, there's number six, is Green's Exploration. So, I it's... It's such a, it's you know the the reason this is so rated so highly in this list, is because it made decks literally a whole bunch of archetypes and decks would not exist if it wasn't for Green's Exploration. Um, it's just it was just amazing card. So you search for any two, any two trainer cards in, in your deck and uh, sorry wait what did you trade cards I think any any two trainer cards in your deck. So you could you know you can grab like a tag corner and you can get two Pokemon or a tag team support for the next turn. Um, you know, Giant Half, you can get, a, in the case of the Greens Charizard deck, you know, you could grab both Welder and Greens. Um, you know, Gardevoir Sylveon was a, was a decent deck as well. I should, I should have probably put Gardevoir Sylveon in my top 10, actually. I do I do apologise. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Gardevoir Sylveon was absolutely busted. And every so often, you know, a new Greens exploration archetype would come out. You know, Mimikyu Gengar, Dragapult VMAX. You just kept seeing Greens decks popping up from everywhere. ADP even had a Greens variant. It was... Just a, an awesome, strong, flexible card. The eight, the birds trio, you know, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres GX. You know that that was a really good deck with green decoration for a, for a couple of formats. So it's just such such a flexible card. Um, it also made you think, you know, about the next turn a bit more. A lot of a lot of decks now, you're just like, 
yeah, I know what I'm doing for this turn. It's it's easy. I just play this and, you know, I'll see what my opponent does. Whereas with Green's Exploration, you really need to play, like, you know, two or three turns sometimes in, in you know, in, in the future. So it was such a busted card, and I will really miss that. It's, I hope we get something similar that, you know, just makes entire archetypes, you know, sprout out from nothing because it was a really cool card. I will, I will miss Green's Exploration a lot. That's why it's number seven on my list. Huh, so we're at the halfway point now. We're going to take a little break and I'm going to talk about my Twitch stream. We go live on Twitch two to three times every week. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash play games. Click the link in the description. I play a lot of standard format. We're going to be qualifying for the... Uh, try and qualify for the Players' Cup number four. We play a lot on the Sunday Open Tournament on the Limitless website. Um, I'd, I'd love for you to join me. And we're also going to be playing new Pokemon Snap very soon. So if you, if you want to see me play that fun video game... I'm very hyped for that game. Uh, please join me on the Twitch stream very soon if you can. So let's get back onto the list. Number five is Pikachu and Zekrom GX. So again, like I could have easily because of because of how busted this card is in terms of the of, of, of an attacking Pokemon. This is probably the strongest card on the list if you're just talking about just the attacker and not not the you know the GX that that, that full blitz um, attack is just so powerful. Pikachu Zekrom every single format since um team up came out almost like to, almost to, over, over two years ago now actually crazy two years ago every single format pikachu zekrom has pretty much always been a top five deck there's been some formats where it saw slightly less play because people thought it wasn't good enough but then as soon as people started playing it again they figured oh yeah who cares about you know this fighting deck you know who who cares who cares about Colossal? Who cares about Urshifu? Pikachu Zekrom GX is what's still viable and it's still very strong. And it had some amazing partners, in, but more recently in Bolton V, uh, Raichu and the Lolan Raichu GX was a really, really sort of great combo for it. And obviously, you know, Tapu Koko Prism being able to, you know, if you go second sometimes when you had Tapu Koko Prism, you were able to even attack, you know, with Pikachu and Zekrom for 150 damage and get a free Lightning Energies out of the deck. It's such a strong card. It, it really made Lightning, sort of, a, you know, Electric, a really strong archetype over the past two years. It's seen play in so many different different ways, but it's always just that core using Pikachu Zekrom to do the full blitz and then power up another Pokemon, whether it's Mewtwo, Mewtwo EX or whatever ones we talked about. But yeah, Pikachu and Zekrom was a very strong archetype. It was always underrated, but then it came back, and then you know it it, it sort of came out right out of the gate when Team Up came out. So very strong card and um yeah i'm a bit sad that i didn't play a bit more of it because obviously you know pikachu is one of my favorite pokemon but uh, i just i just never got around to it at the time i was so focused on welder decks <laughs> but yeah pikachu and zekrom a very worthy number five number four is jirachi so this card was absolutely insane when we saw it announced um in the japanese tag bolt format or um set or whenever it first was announced like just being able to see the top five cards of your deck and get any trainer card, whether it was a draw support or a rare candy, you know, an ultra ball, whatever you needed for that turn, you could just pick it and then the sleep, it put itself to sleep after you used the Stellar Wish ability, but nobody cares because we had Guzma to switch it out back then. But now nowadays we've got Scoop Up Net, we've got Switch, you know. Um, we had a, It came out when they had a skateboard. You can just put a skateboard on it. And, you know, pe a lot of people thought, you know, because we're losing the skateboard, Jirachi would see a lot less play, but no, it's still in a bunch of decks. Send a Scorch, um, there is there is loads of other decks like Fireboxes, all, all sorts of other decks have been. Um, Dragapult was a big fan of Jirachi, like when it when uh, Dragapult first came out. So yeah, Jirachi has just been a huge staple and cornerstone of a lot of decks, just making them a lot more consistent without the need to have to put like an extra Dedenes, extra draw supporters, because you just always knew that if you were in trouble, you could just use a Jirachi and try and find your Stellar Wish. And you know, it partnered really well with the Zapdos from Team Up. It was a really strong deck for like two formats as well. So. Yeah, I will miss Jirachi a lot as well, but we do have Jirachi Prism, um, Jirachi Amazing Rare, which is it only gets you two, you can look at two cards and pick one. It's not as good, but it's still, you know, it's a worthy spiritual successor to the Jirachi Team Up. Very strong card, and I will miss it. Number three is the Dene GX. So I was debating whether I should have put the Dene at number four and Jirachi at three, but I think just because every deck could use the, the the Dene pretty much very effectively, apart from Green's decks, whereas with Jirachi you really needed to have had a, a decent amount of switching and cards, you know, and pivoting cards to get it, to use a Jirachi and get it out of the active, so whereas with the, the Dene, you don't care, you just put the Dene on the bench discard your hand and then you draw six brand new cards and it, oh look, I've got a Professor's uh, Research or a, you know, a Cynthia or whatever, I can draw another six or seven cards, you know, 
it's just absolutely insane. It allowed us to turbo through the deck. It was a re it made up for the lack of shaman. Once shaman rotated, you know we were la we're lacking kind of like auxiliary draw cards. So to have that the Den AGX was really really strong, and especially in the decks that relied on welder, such as Reshiram, Charizard, and um, Firebox decks when they first came out, Mewtwo and Mew GX. Um, and more recently, Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia GX with Zashin, being able to use the Dene to just draw for your, you know, to find that key combo, that that key supporter, was really powerful. And I think the Dene is probably the, the best tech card out of all, of, probably the number one tech card that we'll miss the most. Thankfully, we've got Crobat V. It's not as good because if you got up on your, if you know, if you go first on your first turn, you've got no Pokemon, you can't really play your hand down. Where Crobat, you only draw like one or two cards if you're lucky. Um, the Dene always allowed you to get a fresh six, so it was really good for those earlier turns as well. But yeah, Crobat is still going to be a useful card, but the Dene is on a whole nother level, and I will miss the potato a lot. It's a very strong card. And number two, we're at number two, and it was basically either going to be either or. I knew straight away either of these cards could have easily had been um, number one or number two, but I put Welder at number two, so. Welder is just the most busted supporter card I've seen since I started playing the Pokemon TCG in early 2016. Um, Guzma, don't get me wrong, Guzma was very strong. and But, you know, a lot of the time, Guzma, you know, just, you had, you, I, I, I don't know really how to, how to phrase it, but Welder is just so very powerful. So being able to get those two energies, like I was talking about the, the restaurant and Charizard earlier, the Blacephalon. Being able to get free energies on a Pokemon just from an empty board state was absolutely insane. You could do 200 damage with Reshiram Charizard. You could power up your Blacephalon and then just do huge damage if you had more fire energies in your hands. Welder just created a lot of fire archetypes literally out of nothing. I think the strongest Mewtwo deck that lasted the longest was probably the fire versions. Um, again, heavily reliant on Welder. Send the Scorch, um, you know, more recently Victini. Lots of amazing fire decks have just sprung up and just been, you know, been impactful and powerful simply just because of Welder existing. And I really think this card was overpowered. Um... I think it would have been more balanced if it was just attach one and draw three. It still would have seen play, especially in like um, Charizard and Restaurant and Mewtwo. It still would have seen play, I think. But I think just being able to attach the energies and draw the cards is just it is incredible. It's crazy powerful. And there is a new water version coming out soon for Melanie, which allows you to attach one water energy from your discard pile and then draw three is much more balanced version. So um, that's why Welder is number two in my list. It's such a strong card. It literally made fire always be tier one no matter what the meta was no matter what other water pokemon was around it's just an insane card and you know it's so much stronger than blacksmith and previous fire support before it so welder um will be missed a lot especially by me and my <laughs> and my you know my greens charizard deck it's absolutely insane card but what else could it be at number one than arceus and dialga and palkia gx from cosmic eclipse there it, there was no real you know question in my mind when i saw that the rotation was today what the cards would be it's just a stupidly powerful card like being able to take an extra prize card pretty much you know the and because of how many people were playing this deck pretty much just wrote out a whole bunch of non gx and non v and v max pokemon from the meta just because you know, or you come up against ADP, it sort of screws over the prize trade. So that it's a single prize Pokemon that aren't GXs or V or V Maxes. You know, they they had a good matchup against um, you know tag team and GX Pokemon sometimes because um, depends on the decks obviously. But because you know you can knock out one of their Pokemon, take two or three prizes, and then they have to spend two or three turns to take the same amount of prizes, knocking out your, their single prize Pokemon. But then ADP comes along. Oh, look, I can take two prizes against a, you know, 120 H, 110 HP Blast Ephelon or, you know, whatever, insert, you know, insert Rogue Stage 1 or Stage 2 deck here. Like, it's just absolutely insane. And even against V and VMAX Pokemon, just being able to use that, that Alter Creation GX on your second turn um, or first turn if you're going second sometimes, and then next turn, you attach an energy to it, you use Boss's Orders or Great Catcher, bring up the Dene or Crobat, take free prizes, and then your opponent just might as well give up because there's no way they can come back from that unless they got off to a stupidly good start themselves. So, Or it's a mirror match and they got to take those first three prizes. So it really kind of accelerated the tag team format um, and took it to a whole nother level. Giving it 280 HP was also silly because based on the attack... And the GX, it really should have only had like 250, 260 at most. And 
it's just a stupidly powerful card. And also, another big deal more recently was because Fairy Pokemon were rotated out of the standard format. There were, you know, the obvious counter, Gardevoir Sylveon, or other Fairy, like obviously Gramble rotated, and the other counter, Gar the only other sort of viable Fairy Pokemon, Gardevoir Sylveon, it's weak to metal, and then it pl you play it with Zash, and then Intrepid Sword, and... ADP is absolutely busted. I am so looking forward to September the 10th when the we're going to move to regulation marks D and E on the cards and I can play some more single prize decks because I don't have to worry about Alter Creation GX and, you know, just being absolutely wrecked like 9 out of 10 times. So ADP is easily the strongest card in the format. No card since I've started playing in 2016 has been so incredibly impactful and has moved a lot of other cards and archetypes completely out of the viable tournament meta just because of it existing. Don't get me wrong, Zorok GX was very powerful, but Zorok GX wouldn't stop other cards from being played because, you know, it only had 210 HP and there was still lots of fighting Pokemon and stuff, whereas ADP, like, is just stupidly powerful. And even, like, the so-called counter cards, like um, Latios GX, really had sort of little to no impact on it. And, you know, Pokemon Ranger is expanded so it's not as strong as an expanded because of pokemon ranger but still very strong there but yeah adp is a very worthy and easy number one on my list for the you know the strongest 10 cards that are going to be rotating from the tag team formats but i'd love to know your thoughts you know do you agree with my top 10 are there any other cards that should have been in my honorable mentions or in my top 10 i'd love to know what you think Please click the, you know, link in the description if you want to join me on Twitch. We can talk more about this um, during the streams. Uh, leave a comment below, you know, what do you think about the rotation. And yes, I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. Please also click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you very soon, Pokemon fans. Gotta catch more. A huge thank you to our lovely patrons. They get exclusive videos, market updates, Q&As with me, and much more besides. Click the link below to join the Place Get Games Patreon, and I will see you very soon, Pokemon fans. Gotta catch more.